Hey everybody, Mr. Poller here. In this video, I'd like to share an awesome web-based simulation called DNA to Protein, which does a really nice job of modeling the processes of transcription and translation to teach the concept of the central dogma of molecular biology. Let's start by talking a bit about genes. We've all heard that genes determine traits like hair color, eye color, or blood type. But what really is a gene? To answer this, we need to talk about three types of molecules, DNA, RNA, and proteins. A gene is defined as a segment of DNA, which will be used to produce an RNA molecule in a process called transcription. Some types of RNA molecules are the end product for a gene. Some examples include ribosomal RNA and transfer RNA molecules, which will be discussed later in this video. RNA molecules called messenger RNA will go through an additional process called translation, which creates proteins that will perform important functions in the cells and bodies of living organisms. Now let's start the simulation from the beginning. Our first view of the simulation shows a number of cells and the cell nuclei. You can run this model with the default DNA sequence, but it also lets you input any sequence you'd like to analyze. I'll click on the Edit DNA button. You can see the default sequence. I'm going to delete that sequence and paste in my own sequence. Okay, there it is. When the model runs, the process of transcription will use the sequence I just entered. All I need to do now is click Apply, and then we're ready to go. You can run the model and have it go straight through, or you can run it step by step. Since this is a first look, I'll run the model step by step to give time for explanations. I'll start by clicking Transcribe Step by Step to show the process of transcription, which is when a DNA template is used to build a molecule of RNA. When I click on the button, we zoom into the cell, then the cell nucleus. Now we see yellow-orange ribbon-like material that represents the DNA and then the double helix structure. The brown blob you see surrounding the DNA represents a molecule of RNA polymerase. This is the enzyme that carries out the process of transcription. Now we can see the DNA has been unwound and unzipped to show us a 2D model of this process. You can see the top strand of the unzipped DNA is the sequence we pasted into the editor. This strand is called the coding strand. The lower strand is the one which will be used to build the RNA. This strand is called the template strand. A blue adenine nucleotide has paired with the first base of the template strand, which is a T for thymine. The RNA strand will be built using the base pairing rules that are used in the process of DNA replication with one modification. RNA molecules will have a nitrogen base called uracil instead of thymine. Clicking on transcribe step by step shows us the A on the template strand will pair with a U. Continuing to click on this button will bring in the nitrogen bases one at a time. C with G, C with G, T with A, G, C, G, C, C, G, T, A, A, U. I can click on transcribe if I want to speed up this process. As this runs, you can see that all of the new RNA molecule has a red line above it. This is meant to show us that the backbone of RNA is slightly different than the DNA backbone. Remember, the backbone of DNA alternates deoxyribose sugars and phosphates. The RNA backbone alternates ribose sugars and phosphates. The process of building a new RNA molecule takes place inside the nucleus of eukaryotic cells, including plant cells and animal cells. The RNA molecule will separate from the DNA molecule as the process of transcription finishes. The DNA will zip itself back together, and the RNA molecule will leave the nucleus. Let's show this by clicking on the Translate Step-by-Step -step button. This will start the process of translation, or protein synthesis. The model shows the RNA molecule leaving the nucleus to go into the cytoplasm of the cell. You can see the two parts of the ribosome coming together. A ribosome is a cell structure that builds proteins and is made of a large and a small subunit. The RNA sequence we just built will be read by the ribosome as a series of three-letter words, or three bases. The three-base unit is called a codon. The first codon to be read is AUG. AUG is often called the start codon, and its bases are complementary to the anticodon to a transfer RNA, tRNA, which carries the amino acid called methionine, or MET for short. The first tRNA carrying methionine is shown in the P site of the ribosome. P is short for peptidyl. 
This site holds the tRNA, which is linked to the growing polypeptide, the chain of amino acids. A codon chart can be used to determine the amino acid coded by any possible combination of A, U, G, and C. To read a codon chart like the one shown, you select the row using the first base, the column using the second base, and the third base allows you to select which amino acid will be added to the protein. Clicking the Translate Step-by-Step -step button will bring in the next tRNA to what is called the amino acyl site, or the A site. This is where the incoming tRNA will match up with the codon. We can see that the second tRNA brought an amino acid abbreviated ASP, which is short for aspartic acid. There are 20 standard amino acids which are used to build proteins, and two additional amino acids which are found in some prokaryotic cells. Essential amino acids are those which cannot be synthesized by human metabolism and must be supplied by your diet. Okay, back to the model. You can see the MET and the ASP have been linked. The bond that forms between amino acids is called a peptide bond. Clicking the button brings in the next tRNA, which carries the amino acid arginine, or ARG for short. This matches what the codon chart tells us. We get ARG. We also saw the first tRNA move to a location on the ribosome called the exit site, or E site. The first tRNA leaves the ribosome during this step and can be used again later. A new peptide bond forms between ASP and ARG. So we now have a chain consisting of three amino acids. The next codon, UCA, codes for serine, S-E-R, followed by CCA, coding for proline, P-R-O, UAC codes for tyrosine, TYR. The next three bases are UGA, which is one of the stop codons that will end the process of elongation when amino acids are being linked together. Any of the three stop codons will end the process of protein synthesis. Actual genes will create polypeptide chains of varying lengths. Some genes will create polypeptides containing tens, hundreds, or even up to thousands of amino acids. In eukaryotes, polypeptide chains go through a process of editing called post-translational modification to create the final version of a protein that will function in the organism. So we have seen how the sequence of bases in our original DNA sequence created a specific sequence RNA molecule, which in turn created a protein with a specific amino acid sequence. The model shows us amino acids using two colors, gold and green. The gold amino acids are hydrophobic The green amino acids are hydrophilic. The term hydrophobic means water-fearing, and hydrophilic means attracted to water. Proteins will form twists and fold to take on a final form with a unique three-dimensional shape. Hydrophobic amino acids will tend to be found embedded in the interior of a protein to avoid contact with water, while hydrophilic amino acids are often found on the outside edges where they can interact with water. The three-dimensional structure or shape of the protein will determine the job that it will perform in cells. I'll follow up this video with the second one to explore the effects of mutations, changes to the DNA sequence, which can be caused by environmental factors, including chemicals, radiation, or biological agents like viruses. Thank you for watching. I hope you found this video informative and helpful. If you did, please consider giving it a like and leaving a note or a question for me in the comments. And don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell if you want to keep up with all the new videos I'm posting about chemistry, biology, and other cool science stuff. Until next time, stay curious.